Okay, y'all, I'd like to tell you a suggestion in today's video. We're going to be doing some overclocking of the Ryzen 5 3600 on the Asus B550M-A Wi-Fi motherboard with proper cooling. If you've seen the other video up on the channel where I showed you how to overclock the Ryzen 5 3600 on this motherboard, I couldn't get it to overclock very good or really none at all because of the Hyper T4 heatsink wasn't good enough to keep the CPU cool to be able to get any performance gain out of it. But now I have some proper cooling for the CPU, so I figured I'd revisit this and see what kind of performance I could get out of the Ryzen 5 3600 with proper cooling to it. This is a tutorial or a how-to to show you how to get this overclocking done on the Ryzen 5 3600. I hold no responsibility if you decide to do this with your own system and though you cause any damage to your system, your motherboard, or your CPU. If you decide to do this, you take full responsibility for the outcome of your actions. As far as the specs go of the system, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. The motherboard is the ACS Prime B550M-A Wi-Fi motherboard. To keep that 3600 cool, we have the Be Quiet Pure Loop 240mm all-in-one water cooling system. For the storage on the system, we have the Silicon Power 512GB NVMe SSD. The RAM is G-Skill Drip Jaws 5 Series 16GB. This RAM is able to run up to 3600 MHz, but I did leave it running at stock, which is 2133 for my test today. For the GPU, we have the Gigabyte Radeon RX 5600 XT WinForce OC 6 Gigabit Graphics Card. The case is the Cooler Master HAF XP EVO case with the side panels left on. And the PSU to power the whole system with the EVGA 650 Watt 80 Plus Gold Semi Modular Power Supply. And since the last time I tried to overclock this CPU on this motherboard, I was using the Hyper T4 and the temperature is what was holding me back. I figured I'd revisit this now since I got that all in one, which should do a lot better than the Hyper T4 did. So let me show you how to overclock your Ryzen 3600 on this motherboard, show you what I was able to pull out of it, and I'll be back with my conclusion to the video. So to start out, we need to go down here to the start button, go up to the power, we go up to restart, and just start tapping the delete key on the keyboard. All right, there we go. We're into the into the BIOS here. We'll go down here and uh, the advanced mode. Okay, now since we're in the advanced mode, you go to AI Tweaker. And just like last time, we want to go down here to Precision Boost Overdrive, or PBO. And we're going to take this and put this from Auto to Disable. Okay, then we're going to go back. Okay, then we're going to go down here to the CPU voltage. Okay, and it's, it's Auto, it's reading about 1.3. We're going to change this to Manual. I don't want to do an offset, I want to manually do it. We want to put a 1.35. It's been on the safe side. I know they say you can do higher than that, but I like the 1.35. All right, now we're going to go back up here to the core ratio. It says auto. Or it says auto. We're going to click on that. And it's by 100. In the last video, we couldn't do 4.5 gigahertz because of the temperatures. So that's what we're going to start out at. All right, guys, where it says auto, we're going to hit 45 and hit enter, okay, which means it should be running at 4.5 gigahertz. Then you're going to hit F10 to save and exit. And hit OK. Let the system reboot up into Windows. See if it's stable enough to get into Windows. All right, now since we're into Windows, I'm gonna pull up AMD Ryzen Master here. All right, guys, and you can see down here, it says 4,500, which is in the megahertz, which would be 4.5 gigahertz. So the overclock did take. Of course, it ain't running at this max speed right now because there's no sense in running at this max speed. 
Okay, before I got started, I ran Santa Bench R23 to get a baseline for what it did. Uh, did straight out of the box at 3.6 gigahertz there. And we got a score of 9,364. So we're gonna run the multi-core thread again. And we're gonna see what kind of score we get this time or if it's even stable enough to finish. Center Bench R23 runs for about nine minutes, I believe it is. So it's a pretty good little stress test for it. And while, once I get the test started here, I'll be pulling AMD Ryzen Master up and uh, that way we can watch the temperatures and whatnot. There you go, you can see all the cores is running at 4500 megahertz all the way down. And we're running at about 20, uh, just about 20, 71 degrees Celsius. Um, it is a 10 minute test, I was wrong. I said nine minutes, it's actually a 10 minute test. So we're gonna sit here and watch it and uh, see if it's stable enough to run for 10 minutes at 4.5 gigahertz or not. All right, guys, there we go. It actually finished up at 4.5 gigahertz. It's actually able to run the uh, Center Bench R23. And as you can tell by looking at the um, temperatures here, we're looking at about 73 degrees. Most of the time, 74 degrees is about the high temperatures. And it was running all at 4,500 megahertz all the way down. Now you notice we're using about 110 watts of power of the 88 watts available to it. And these over here on the 60 amp and the 90 amp, we was getting up in the red on them. Um, but it did finish it. It gave us a pretty good little boost in score. We went from a 9,364 and we went up to 10,151. Pretty good little boost. But of course you're looking at, you know, from 3.6 gigahertz up to 4.5, which when I ran to 3.6 gigahertz, because of PBO, it was actually running up to 4.1 gigahertz. Since I got a little bit more extra headroom here, I'm gonna go back into the BIOS and I'm gonna play around a little bit and see what I can actually get this thing to finish the uh, Senate Bench R23 at. And uh, we'll come back with uh, and I'll show you, show you the end results and what I could actually push the 3600 uh, CPU up to. Okay, 4700 megahertz, 4.7 gigahertz. Let's launch Cinebench. We'll start the multi-core, pull AMD Ryzen Master up, whoops, nope, that ain't gonna happen. Okay, 47 was too strong, it actually crashed, so we'll go with 46, we'll give that a try. Okay, there we go, 4,000. Four and 600 megahertz, which is 4.6 gigahertz. Let's see if we can run the center bench or 23. As soon as I hit this button last time, it crashed on me at 47. Nope, crashed again. Okay, 46 was too much as well. That's 45.5. All right, well, at least we're into the desktop this time. Should open up AMD Ryzen Master. Should be set to 45.5. Four thousand five hundred and fifty megahertz, which is four point five five gigahertz. 
Let's see if we can run Cinebench R23 here with it. As you can see, we did uh, 3.6, which is base, which did do up to 4.1 with us. Then we did get 4.5 to run Cinebench. 4.6 and 4.7 crashed. So now we're going to try the 4, 4 5.5. As you can tell over here on the core clocks, we are running, every one of them is running at 4.55 4 gigahertz. Uh, looks like right now we're running about 73C, but you look at the wattage, we're up to about 106, 108% of the 88 watts available to it. And we're also hitting 94, 95% of the 60 amp, and we're also hitting 100% of the 90 amp. So I think that there's going to be our factors now instead of the temperature. I think that's going to be about the best that we're going to get if it completes it. I think that's going to be about the best we're going to be able to get out of the CPU on this particular motherboard. But uh, we'll see if it'll see if it'll actually complete this or not. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes. All right, all, and there we go. It did finish in the bench or 23. That is running at five point, that is running at 4.55 gigahertz or 4,550 megahertz. It did complete the run. Looks like the temperature is running about 75 degrees on it. And up there you can tell it was running all six cores, 12 threads at the 4.55 gigahertz at all times. It did give us, it gave us a good bit of a boost in our score here on our 23. Um, the stock was 3.6 gigahertz. We got 9,364. Then we got it up to 4.5 gigahertz and it went up to 10,151. And then with the uh, overclock of 4.55 gigahertz, we got up to uh, 100. 10,420. So it is a pretty good boost over what we was boosting up to. On stock, it was boosting up to about 4.1 gigahertz. And I did try this. Um, I did try this up to 4.75. I tried 4.6, 4.7, and none of them was stable. It wouldn't even, once I, as soon as I got into Center Bench R23, it would crash. So I believe the 4.55 is about the best that I could do with my processor. But of course, if you're gonna be doing this with your own system and you wanna run this as a full-time overclock, you definitely wanna run something like Prime 95 or something like that, or put this on loop to where it constantly loops and loops and loops, you know, for you know, 45 minutes to an hour at least, if not better, um, depending on how long you usually play your games for it each session, you know, but I'd recommend at least 45 minutes to an hour just to make sure that it's a stable overclock. You know, you don't want to be in that game getting ready to take that last headshot on that last component for your team to win and boom, it crashes on you. That ain't a good feeling at all. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. But anyways, guys, um, that's about the best that I got out of mine was 4.55 gigahertz. Let me get reset up here and uh, I'll come up with a conclusion to the video for you guys. All right, all, and there you go. That's what I'm able to get out of my particular Ryzen 5 3600 with my particular motherboard. If you have the same combination, if you have this motherboard and CPU combination, yours may have a clock a little bit better or a little bit worse than what mine does, depending on the silicon lottery. But this is what I was able to push out of mine. I think that all in one did a pretty good job of keeping that CPU cool. Even at the end at the 4.55 gigahertz or the 4550 megahertz, it was only reaching about 75C, which ain't too bad. Which means I still had some headroom within my temperatures. But like I showed you in the video, you know, the voltage on that 60 amp and 90 amp on the CPU was gonna be the holding factor because I still had some plenty of room, I still had plenty of headroom on my temperatures. And there really ain't much you can do with that. That's just the fact of putting so much voltage through the motherboard. So that's about the best that I could get out of mine. If this was my particular everyday system, and I was wanting to keep my CPU overclocked, I'd probably drop it down to the 4.5. Of 
because it was stable but it ain't to the max of what you could push it at so I'd probably drop it back down to that 4.5 and run it as an everyday overclock also if you want to overclock your system and you find out what you can get you run Cinebench R23 which is about a 10 minute test is why I used it in this video that's a pretty good stability test but I'd also recommend running something like Prime 95 or something like that to put it through a longer test to make sure it's going to be stable if you like this kind of content go down and give me a thumbs up if not hit the dislike button or the comment section below I'll go through them every weekend here on my live show on Saturday morning 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and if you really like this kind of content, maybe hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell where you're notified next time I put a video or go live here on YouTube. Also, if you're interested, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I don't kill your inbox, but I do put up photos and new stuff I have coming in to give you an idea of what's coming up on the channel. Or if there's any news about my live stream, if I got to cancel or change the time, that's where you also get that information. But with all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.